Welcome to the worship service of the Abbotsford Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're so pleased that you will join us today. We hope that you are blessed by the songs and the prayers and the words that will be spoken this morning. We live in troublesome times, times that can make us anxious. But we hope that you will draw some strength from what we share and how we worship our Creator God this morning. And I'd like to share a couple of verses from Psalm 17, verses 6 to 8. That's Psalm 17, verses 6 to 8. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show the wonder of your great love. You will save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from yet their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. We pray that you'll feel peace through your worship with us today. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. We are happy to worship with you in this beautiful Sabbath day. The world is created just by the words from the mouth of God. He spoke the word and it was done. We serve a mighty and powerful God. Let us sing hymn number 88. I sing the mighty power of God. skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. With his word and then pronounce them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below. But makes thy glories known And clouds arise and tempests blow By order from thy throne Creatures that borrow life from thee Are subject to thy care There's not a place where we can flee but God is present there. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us sing hymn number 516. All the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me, what of I to us beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know what will befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know what will befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I 
track Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread Though my weary steps may falter And my soul affairs may be Gushing from the rock before me Though a spring of joy I see Gushing from the rock before me Though a spring of joy I see All the way my Savior leads me Oh, the fullness of His love Perfect rest to me is promised In my Father's house above When I wake to life immortal Wing my flight to realms of day This my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way This my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way For our next song, let us sing hymn number 534 Will Your Anchor Hold? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cable strain Will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roll Fastened to the rock which cannot move Grounded firm and deep Will the storm withstand? For tis well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables passed from his heart to thine can defy the blast through strength divine. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. Steadfast and sure while the billows roll Fastened to the rock which cannot move Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love It will firmly hold in the strains of fear when the breakers tell that the reef is near Though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow Not an angry wave shall our bark be or flow We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roll Fastened to the rock which cannot move Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love It will surely hold in the floods of death when the waters cool, chill our latest breath On the rising tide, it can never fail While our hopes abide within the veil We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roll Fast 
into the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold in the dawning light, shining gates of pearl are shall anchor fast to the heavenly shore with the storms of past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which can Let us sing our opening song that is hymn number 86, How Great Thou Art, and we will sing the first and last stanzas. This morning is for the local church budget in these times that obviously is difficult for you to give if you're not here but we do have the opportunity to give online so if you go to abbotsfordadventist.ca and click on the tab for online giving you'll still be able to return your tithes and offerings we pray that you will be faithful in doing that and that God will bless you through it and if you had something for the children's offering offering that goes to the chaplaincy at uh, Fraser Valley Adventist Academy, well, you can also send it through that online giving. Thank you for being faithful. <laughs> Hello, girls and boys. Um, today, we're going to do a little science experiment to learn a little bit about um, things that God says are important and how to fit important things into our life. Okay? So here I have kind of two of everything that is the same. So I have two containers that are the same, and I have 
two bags of almonds that have the same amount, and I have two bags of sugar that has the same amount, and I have all these clementines. So we're going to try an experiment. I'm going to um, put in here um, the sugar. And I'm going to say that the sugar uh, kind of represents in our life things that we love to do. Uh, maybe uh, playing with your friends, maybe eating some sweets that you like, or maybe going someplace uh, special with your family. Uh, things that you don't get to do all the time, things that are just fun to do and, um, and that you like doing but you can't do all the time. Um, and so we're going to put all that in here first, okay? So that's, that's what the sugar represents, kind of sweet things in life, things that make your life happy but uh, you don't always need to do it, like maybe... Um, uh, eating some candy or going uh, to the playground or something. Those are great, they're, they're fun things to do, but you don't always have to do those every day. So there it is. You see it? Okay. And then I have here some almonds. And almonds are things that um, are really important in our lives that, that help us grow stronger. So, for example, we may not always... Uh, want to do these things, but we need to do these things like, like say, exercise. Exercise is really important. It helps us be strong. And maybe we don't always want to drink water, you know, and, and that, uh, and, but it's important that we do that and it, it keeps us healthy and it keeps us strong. And so there we go. There we have those two things. Now, but the most important thing what would be, what do you think would be the most important thing that we have to do in our life? What do you think number one should be that we have in our life? God. Would you say? God. God. I agree with you. I would say God is the most important thing that we should have in our life. So that's what these clementines represent. Okay? And what? Angels, yes, we want angels, and angels listen to God and follow his instructions. So we're going to try to get, now that we had all the fun stuff and the, um, some other important stuff, let's see if we can get God, uh, these uh, clementines in. We got one, but is there room for any more? Can we fit any more in there? We can't, right? They, they, they don't go in. Right? So, and so we didn't, uh, we, you know, it didn't, unfortunately, we couldn't get as much in there. We got a little bit. We got one, right? But we couldn't really get it, get them all in. So, let's try doing it the other way around. Let's try now, and we'll put in, we'll put in these things first. Okay? So, let's start off with this one. Okay? We'll get this one. And we'll put these in first. So we'll put in here one, right? Then we'll put in, say, this one here. Um, and then, oops, I put the wrong one in. Let's try that again. And then we'll put this one in here. And we'll put that one in here. Look at that. We've got, I like to do three of them because it's like saying it's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? that we have in there. And then we put the important things, things that we talked about before. Do you remember what they were? Some of the things we talked about before that were important, may, may not always want to do. What did you say? Oh, that was the sweet stuff. Yeah, that's eating candy. But maybe exercise or uh, drinking water. Um, those are important things that we do. So now we're putting them. So remember, we put in those that, that started off first, uh, that uh, with God first in our lives, right? And then we're going to put in these almonds, that important things, like I said. Also, another one is get enough sleep. Maybe sometimes we just want to play or do something, and we don't really want to go to sleep. And so look at that. We fit 
got in there and we fit all the almonds in there. So things like good sleep, good nutrition, right? Eating, uh, eating healthy and uh, drinking lots of water and um, getting, getting good exercise, right? Things that make us strong, like almonds have protein and they help to keep us strong. Now, what do you think? Now that you see this, do you think all the sugar is going to fit in there? This is the sweet stuff, right? This is stuff that you don't really need but makes life happy, like, like eating a little bit of candy, like maybe um, visiting people you don't always get to see or playing with friends you don't always get to play with. So the sweet things are, uh, th th that's what the sugar is. The sugar is the sweet things in our life that we like to do and that make us happy. Um, so let's see, do you think it'll still fit? You think it will? Maybe, let's try. We're going to see if it all fits. Let's shake it down. Oh, look at that. So the other one was in there, right? Let's see if we're going to get all this one in there. Hmm, I'm going to shake it, try to get it all in. Look at that. What do you think? Do you think it's going to all fit? It looks like it might, right? Let's try to get it all in there. Shake it down. Wow. Hmm, it's different. Before, when we try to put the sugar in first, and then the almonds, and we put, put the most important, having God in last, it didn't fit. But look at this. It all fits. All right? So that's what this story is really about, is saying, you know what? If you put God first in your life, like in the morning, and you pray to God, and you trust in God, then all the other things that you need in your life, they're going to fit in your day, and they're going to fit in your life too. So that's why it's important always to put God first. Okay? Thank you very much. I hope you like this story, or this experiment. Thank you.
I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I invite you to kneel with me as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can come before your throne of grace this day. We thank you for the way that you have blessed our lives, that you have given us this country of Canada, that you have guided us in the past, and you have promises, wonderful promises for the future. In these days, we feel anxious and we can feel constrained by the difficulties we face within our economy and with sickness and uh, discouragement that surrounds us. But Heavenly Father, we pray that we know you'll be with us in each of those areas. And Father, we submit to you that our needs you are well aware of. Please answer them in the way that you know is best so that we can be guided along the path that you have set for us. Heavenly Father, we have within our church many people who are suffering at this time, who are ill and need your blessing for recovery and for comfort. Please remember them, bless them, bless Sister Ellen. Please be with Yvonne and with Jane. Please continue to guide our paths in our church as we continue to try and reach people within their community and through our friends and our family to come to know to a greater knowledge of you. Thank you for giving us so many blessings. We pray that you will use us as a conduit to bless those around us. And Father, we pray that there will be a blessing in the word that is spoken this morning by Pastor Melissa. We lift her up that you will bless her and that your word can comfort hearts who will ever hear and have their heart open to your word. Thank you for your gracious goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Our message today is entitled, God of the Plagues. Um, and it is a message I think is very appropriate for our times today. In Prime Minister Trudeau's address, he uses the term time of uncertainty. And I've heard a lot of people say this also. And there surely is a lot going on in the world today. And many are left with feeling uneasy about their health, their homes, their jobs, their families. And this is among some of the stressors that are going on. Uncertainty has been with humanity throughout history though. And it seems that every time something like this happens, the question is asked, where are you, God? Where are you when my world is crumbling and crashing down all around me? So this morning, I'd like to spend a short time with you going through a beautiful song about trust and confidence in God, Psalm 121. And in this psalm, I'm just going to open it here. David wrote it while he was in the wilderness of Paran. And he felt uncertainty because his friend Samuel had just died. And he realized that his only influential earthly friend was gone. And he had to turn solely to the Lord for help because a crazy man was after him. Interestingly enough, it was also sung by the pilgrims as they journeyed for their, to the yearly festivals in Jerusalem. And they climbed up that mountain to Temple Mount. Read with me, Psalm 121, verse 1. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, but feel free to read from any version wherever you are at home joining us. My version says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? Where? These hills in this verse could refer to Jerusalem as Temple Mount was on a mount and was therefore easily defended. The Jews saw, thought this was the dwelling place of God and so would count on it as a source for divine help. Although some scholars say that 
perhaps it wasn't Jerusalem that the mountains are referring to, but other high places where other uh, pagans would come or other religions and set up their altars and worship other gods. The Bible calls these high places. But either way, the case is asked, in this case it's asked, where should my help come? Where? Where? This is the same question some of you are asking today. Where am I going to get my next roll of toilet paper, perhaps? Where am I going to find hand sanitizer? Where are my children going to go because there's no school? Well, how? Where? Where am I going to pay? Where am I going to get financial help? Because I just got laid off and I still have to pay rent. Where will my help come from? And this beautiful psalm this morning, I believe there is an answer to our question in verse 2. So read with me. Verse 2. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So do something with me. I thought, wherever you are, we can all do something together. Then we're, it's like we're together, see? So wherever you are, uh, find a window and look outside. And I want you to look out. Now, some of you may see skyscrapers or um, maybe your window's closed and all you see is curtains, so just open them. And look out and look past the horizon. Now, here in British Columbia, when I look out, I see the mountain lines. And if I look further, there's maybe a bird flying in the blue sky. Actually, most likely it'll be gray sky because it is rain Coover, but sky. Now, do the opposite with me. Look down, okay? down as much as your neck can allow you, what do you see? Probably rock hard abs, right? Maybe you're pregnant and your child's there, or maybe your toes, but that's you, right? So ask yourself, do I have all the answers for this uncertainty? I know I don't. Now lift your eyes again to, to that window outside, up past the horizon to the sky, and the clouds. Do you see clouds? I hope you see clouds and blue sky wherever you're at. And I want you to remember, and I want you to do this for me. When you feel anxiety creeping in because of this uncertainty and this craziness that's happening, and it hits you like a ton of bricks, I want you to know that there is a God who created that sky and those clouds and that bird and this earth and everything in it, whose help is available to you. God is able to meet any emergency that may arise in your life. Now you might not say to yourself now, are you serious, Melissa? You're probably some other crazy person on the internet trying to give me false hope. No, friend, no. I believe that God is able to meet your emergency, your needs, this plague today, and provide for you in a way that will leave you amazed. So please stick with me, and let's go to verse 3. Verse 3 says, He will not allow your foot to slip. He who slumbers, sorry, he who keeps you will not slumber. Forgive me. He who keeps you will not slumber. Now, on my slides, I have a beautiful picture of a beautiful baby girl. She is holding a teddy bear. And as a, as a first time parent, I remember my child sleeping and running and checking to see if they were alive. Because I just was like, just so vigilant. You, you hear about things and you're just so careful. God's vigilance is unwearied right? That's who God is. He is always attentive to the needs of his children, just as a parent is attentive to their child's needs. And then verse 4 emphasizes that, and I'm going to just read it off my slide. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Have you ever watched over someone at night? Maybe they have a fever, and you're just waiting for their fever to break. Or perhaps you're one of those amazing healthcare workers working shift after shift, helping people who need you. 
or maybe you're just a tired mom, but you just haven't slept for hours. You know what I'm talking about. I know you know those, the college students know too. And you're just, you're so tired, but then you're just, that you're so tired and you want to keep awake and you want to put toothpicks in your eyes, but you just, you know, people that just kind of just <sighs> doze off. You know, you know those kind of people? I don't know if you're kind of those kind of people. But God does not have that problem. He is always attentive never tiring and always willing to hear what's on your heart. Verse 5 says, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Now, in order to have shade, you need a source of light. And the strongest source of light, natural light, is the sun. Okay? So, those of you who live in hot countries know how beautiful and fierce that sun could be. And I love to just lay there and bake and get a nice golden dark color. In Vancouver, that doesn't happen a lot. But this shade premise that's in this verse is protection and is strikingly beautiful. I think of a dad walking in the park with his son or daughter and the child's just skipping along looking around and then all of a sudden they look directly at that son and they're blinded that attentive parent is going to grab that child's hand and put them behind them in their shadow in their shade for protection this is the emphasis of shade i see in my mind when i read this god wants to take you and bring you in his shadow and protect you from the fierceness. In this verse, it also talks about a right hand. And in the Hebrew thought, a right hand signifies strength and power. So let's put strength and power with that protection and you get a divine protector. God wants to be your divine protector. Let's continue in verse six. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. In this verse, it brings both the sun and moon together, but neither, neither will harm you because God controls it all. Remember, he's the one who created it all. And although some may look to the celestial bodies for help, God is the creator and maker of them all and is able to keep you safe from nature itself, just as he kept the children of Israel safe as they journeyed years for years in the wilderness. We're gonna talk a little bit more about them later. But verse seven goes deeper. Now I love this picture because it's a dog protecting a newborn baby. Such a cute picture. Verse seven says, the Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. This verse doesn't talk about just one, but two kinds of evil, both moral and physical evil, and God is able to protect you from all of it. Our verse eight ends this beautiful psalm in a beautiful way. It says, the Lord will guard your going out and your going in from this time forth and forever. Isn't that a beautiful promise? God watches over us watches over everything we do and is our divine protector. But does this answer the question, where is God? Perhaps to some it has and offers some comfort, but to others I feel like we must, we must study a little bit further and talk about the children of Israel in Egypt because they too went through some tough and uncertain times. Where was God in the middle of the 10 plagues that happened in Egypt? So we're going to do a quick story recap, okay? Joseph brought the children of Israel to Egypt for safety. They were good there. They prospered. Somewhere along the line, they became slaves and were oppressed. And they cried out to God, God, help us. And so God rose up Moses, who came and came to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh was like, no, bro. No, bro. It's not going to happen. And therefore, the plagues. The first three plagues hit both the Israelites and the Egyptians equally. Blood, frogs, gnats, equally. But come plague number four, that plague did not touch the Israelites. They were protected. 
So you might ask yourself, why, perhaps, why, 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 why did he not keep them from the first three? Perhaps it is because their beliefs and their faith of the Israelites now after so long being in Egypt mirrored that of the Egyptians. Perhaps they didn't believe in that one all-powerful God anymore, but maybe he was lumped in with all the Egyptian gods and they did not acknowledge him. Sometimes God allows life to happen and even suffering and no, I don't believe that God wants anyone to suffer because that's just not who he is. But because sin in this world, yeah, bad things happen and even suffering. But God is there calling our hearts back to him, just as he did to the Israelites. He called them back to him. And he wants to pull you, just as he pulled them, into his shadow to protect them and protect you. You know, suffering makes me appreciate the times where there's no pain. But life has never proven to be painless. However, in that midst, in the midst of your pain, he is there for me and he is there for you. And I believe God desperately wants to help you. He, he wants you to know that he is God and that he is all powerful and able to control and protect you even from this plague and this uncertainty we face today. This is why he is God of the plague. And do you know where he is? Do you know where he is? He is right beside you in the middle of it. In the middle of all this uncertainty and crazy, he is right here with us. Now, I don't know the future. I only know who my God is. And Psalm 121 gives us a glimpse of who he is. And so I want to just close with a, a final look at this psalm and two Hebrew words that are repeated both six times, which shows of their importance and their emphasis. The first one is shamar. Shamar is a word that means to keep or to watch. It has nuances and can be translated as to guard, to protect, to attend, to observe, to preserve, to regard, to reserve. Shamar. The second is translated and written in our Bible as the Lord, but it's the word Yahweh. Its etymology, or the origin of this word, conveys the idea of God who is with man. God, a relational God, a God who is near. So I want you to look at these, and I've put it up on the slide. This, these words are found in these verses 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8. And as you look at it, I want you to notice, he who keeps you, he who keeps Israel or God's people. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will keep your soul. The Lord will guard you. I want you to notice, he who keeps, he who keeps. That can be past tense to present. The Lord is, is a present. The Lord will, is a future. Do you get the message? He's repeating over and over, the Lord, our God, who is a God that is with us, wants to keep us. The word that is used, keep, keep, keeper, protect, keep, and guard, are all shamar. He is a relational God, and he wants to watch over, keep you, and guard you, because he is right in the midst of this plague, of this uncertainty. Now, I'm not saying don't wash your hands, okay? Don't get me wrong. I do believe that we should take precautions and prepare as much as possible. But I'm saying now more than ever, we need faith. We need to talk to God, to turn to him and share what's on our hearts and open our hearts to him. He wants us, you and me, to seek him with all our hearts and depend on him to be our deliverer. 
Old Testament professor B. H. Lim said, for both grief and hope compromise the rhythm of faith and worship. Now our faith does not guarantee a struggle-free life, but it does guarantee a God who is with us right here, that God of the universe, a personal God, and that hope and that promise is guaranteed. You might say to yourself, well, Melissa, I don't have faith. Is that something I buy on Amazon? You might say to yourself, well, you see, I'm just not a good person. Or you don't know what I've done or where I've been. I'm, I'm just not worthy. Friends, only Jesus is worthy. And he wants for us to come to him. And he wants to forgive us no matter where we've been or what we've done. And he wants to give us his worth and, and cover us so that we may be found worthy. So today, I want to challenge you. Thank you for being with us here today. But I want to challenge you to accept Jesus. And this doesn't need a special ceremony. It doesn't need, you know, ribbon or cake, although, you know, that's fun too. You can say it out loud or in the quietness of your voice, of your heart, I mean. And you can say something like, Jesus, I want you to be my divine protector. Or, Jesus, I need you to be here with me in this crazy. Or simply, Jesus, I need you. Because God desires to have a relationship with us, with you and me. So will you today take my challenge and depend on him, the God of the plague, a God that is near us and with us, and depend on him no matter what. Will you do that with us today? Please pray with us. Heavenly Father, we don't know the future, but you do. We don't know, the, we don't have the answers, but we know that you can and will be with us protect us and provide for us in ways that we won't even understand and we'll be like wow this had to be god god i pray for every person that is with us here today and that is hearing my voice i pray god that the holy spirit may be with them may bless them abundantly that you may answer their prayers and hear the cries of their heart and show them that you are God, able and willing to provide, to love, to forgive. Father, I praise you for everything you're going to do. And I praise you that you're going to take us through this time of uncertainty. Because you are God. And we love you. And we trust you. And we thank you for Jesus. In his precious name, I ask all these things. Amen. Let us sing our closing song, hymn number 100. Hymn number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, and